What's going on everybody? I know this video is coming out a little bit late, but unfortunately I had to watch uh, Liverpool choke away a dominant, dominant game. And I'm really just not happy. So I'm going to channel my unhappiness into focus on DFS. Um, that shouldn't be filtered the way it is. I'm going to take a look at every game. I won't be playing the early set, but uh, I do have everything loaded so we can take a look. But I'm going to I'll only be playing the main slate, the, the late three. So first up, we've got uh, Kings and Raptors. Uh, Willie Colley Stein is out. I haven't seen any other news uh, about anybody else for this particular game. Um, Kings have a 100 point implied total, which is 11th out of the 12 uh, teams to play today. Um, not really sure what they're going to be doing with their big man rotation. You know, Scal is back up. Justin Jackson's back up. Malachi Richardson's back up. Um, you know, Jakar Sampson went from 25 minutes to 33 minutes to 12 minutes. You know, uh, Vince Carter played 32 minutes. There's no real telling what they're doing. Um, I think, you know, taking a look at Zebo is probably still safe. But it's kind of bizarre the way they're rotating people not really um not really something that you can focus on with any confidence but that's where i come in um on a side note uh, the projections are going to be taken out officially of the uh, google sheets today um, right now the projections are loaded onto my website uh, for FanDuel, it's joshengelman.com slash FanDuel. Uh, for DraftKings, it's, you know, .com slash DraftKings. Uh, I still have some formatting to do for FanDuel, but either way, uh, this is going to be the location of everything moving forward. And I'm going to try to have uh, a Google Sheet or a, an Excel sheet similar to my current one that'll take this information. You could, you know, fully copy it, paste it into the sheet, and have some, like, pivot tables to play with, so... I'm going to do that as well. That might be like a Tuesday thing, depending on how much time I have today. Got a bunch of stuff to do around the house. So let's look at the Kings first, just to take a, a gander if anybody stands out big time. Clear the shortlist from last night. Uh, no recap video, just because it's already so late in the day. Um, I was down... I don't know, like 50%. Uh, hit just under 300 points. Amir ended up being the bust that I expected. Um, which didn't help. Harden was good. Capella, you know, was a ghost. It's a shame. Shout out to Vooch, I guess. Alright. So we need to open up another window here. See, I'm out of my element. So much better at this one uh, when it's 5.30 in the morning and it's the only thing that I've seen for the day. I come in here and it's just garbage. I'm just, it just takes me 10 minutes to get my head right. So this would have been a great situation for somebody that takes the ball to the rim a lot. Um, Kings don't really have that sort of guy, which is funny. Let's see, can I make this not look like trash? Close enough. Um, so Zebo would need 36. There's no reason to suspect that can't happen. I mean, he's been going off his last four. How much has his salary risen? Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Up to 72 now. I mean, I think he's still in play. 
but just be wary of the minutes. I'm not entirely sure which direction they're going to be going. And let's see. De'Aaron Fox had a big uptick in minutes. Um, I'm not entirely sure how interesting that is. Let me see if he's how he's been playing lately. Where's Fox at? Yeah, I don't love it. But he has been better. I don't think there's anything else you could really look at here for Sacramento. I mean, if you're playing just the early slate or something, you probably need to work in somebody. But it's a terrible total. And, you know, they just called up three more guys. I'm not entirely sure how this is all going to shake out. And that's not really where I want to hitch my wagon. So let's go to Toronto. And, you know, obviously we're looking at Lowry and DeRozan. Um, and I think Abaka is worth a peek. I don't think anybody else plays enough consistent minutes to like be able to get a feel for it. You know, in GPPs you can look at Siakam and Yaka Pertle and Valanciunas, but they're not really cash plays any longer because of their minutes. Okay, so I like Lowry at 8,300 just because he shoots a ton of threes. And I think that we want to take a look at OG Ananobi, actually. And Abaka, for that matter. Abaka might have the opportunity to shoot some, uh, shoot a couple more threes if we can get him to stop taking some, some of the long mid-range stuff. So Lowry is at 8,300 on FanDuel, which means he needs 41 for value. Um, it's been over 40 in three of his last five, just under it in the fourth here, and that was in 27 minutes. Uh, I don't see anybody on the Kings that are really going to be causing him any problems. So I think Kyle Lowry is worth a, a very close look. And then uh, Ananobi played 34 minutes the last time out. He played 24 the game before that. Um, so if that's a trend for him at 24 minutes, you know, I've got him at 25 for tonight, but at 24 minutes, you know, there are worse uh, looks to take. Let me find him here. Yeah, at 3,600, you know, he could be a sneaky GPP play tonight. Or even, you know, if you needed to get really creative in cash. Um, I'll pass on DeRozan. And uh, let's see, Abaka needs 27, which he has done in his last three, almost three of four. And that has corresponded with his sort of uptick in roll. Um, so I think Abaka could be worth a peek as well. And I'd probably avoid Abaka on DK, but... Lowry and uh, OG are both okay for looks. Uh, Lowry especially. We'll head to Detroit. Um, this game's uh, horrendous for fantasy, sort of. Uh, Pistons are one and a half point underdogs at home against the Celtics. They have the tenth highest implied total. Uh, no interesting news from the Pistons, so we can just take a quick gander at their shot charts. Or shot tables, I guess. Avery Bradley revenge game seems like a decent narrative. Did Drummond go crazy on the Celtics last time, or did he get, or did he have a shit game? I can't remember. It's one or the other. Yeah, went crazy. Oh, yeah, it was that huge one. Okay. That is not the first time he's done that either. So it's going to be hard not to look at Drummond. What was his salary then? 8900 So he's $600 more expensive. That's three additional points. Um, 
No reason to think that Drummond shouldn't be in play here. And um, I want to take a look at Reggie, Avery Bradley, and Tobias Harris. So Reggie Jackson will need 30. Um, hasn't done it in the last two. Hit it in the two before that. How did he do in that last uh, Celtics game? Played well. I think Reggie Jackson looks okay. Um, I feel like Avery Bradley's not going to get the look that I want. 27. Been there in the last one. You know, real close the game before that. And then two just... Big fat goose eggs. I'll pass on Avery Bradley. I don't really care too much about the revenge narrative. What did he do? Yeah, nothing special. And then finally, Tobias Harris, 6,500, so that's 32. Um, you know, he's been in and around there. How was that matchup for him last time? Went well. I think it's a good matchup for him, so I'm, I'm going to have to list him. Don't really like that game, but, you know, what are you going to do? Then to Boston. As far as I know, Marcus Morris is going to play, but he is questionable. So the assumption is that he is in. Let's grab the Celtics crap. God, I just want to smash something over this Liverpool nonsense. I know this is a fantasy basketball um, video, podcast, whatever, but whew, not happy. Huh. Okay. Um, I think I only want to take a look at Irving and Horford. I don't really see anything else very specifically that I want. So, start on Kyrie. Needs 40. You know, hit it three times in the last seven. He's always up and around there. I'm guessing that Avery Bradley would guard him. How did Kyrie perform in that uh, in that last one? Six of sixteen, one of six from three, six turnovers. How did he do against Boston in the past? Not very well. Yeah, I'm gonna ignore Kyrie. And then um, Horford. Salary down <clears throat> $600 in the last couple days. Um, did not play very well in this matchup previously. Needs 35 to hit value, which he did not. He had a you know, pretty poor game two nights ago after a 50-pointer. But he had four straight of value uh, prior to that. He has been playing pretty well. I'm going to put the, that game aside and say that he's in play. And that's much more of a fan duel play. He's a, he's a little too expensive on DraftKings. Same for Kyrie or even the whole Celtics. I'll head to Indiana. Um, 111.5 implied total. It's second on the for the full day. Um, and they're five and a half point favorites against the Nuggets. Um, I think Miles Turner looks pretty good on DK. I haven't liked uh, Darren Collison's minutes lately. It's kind of concerning. Man, nobody's going to watch this video because of football. <laughs> 
Should have just put the projections out and called it a day. I hope somebody gets something out of this. I might actually go live before lock tonight. There will be ten of us. Okay, so I'll look at Thad. I think Thad, Boyan, and Collison are all questionable. I expect them to play. Um, I'm going to ignore Boyan. I'll take a look at uh, Thad. And there's no way I'm looking at Oladipo. So Thad needs 33. It's pretty much in that area all the time. I feel like his salary has gone up, though, which is concerning. Has up to 66. Outside of Miles Turner on DK, I don't see a ton that I like here. It's not really a great game for Boyan. Collison has been concerning me. You know, 26, 21, 22 minutes across the board. I don't... Mm, it's not going to be for me. Let's go to Denver. Uh, 106 implied total at 6th on the entire slate. And when I do the... Uh, the full day. I'm going to filter this stuff out so that I can talk just specifically to the main slate. Um, not that it really matters. So Denver is going to have some value. Uh, Jamal Murray is questionable. Jokic out. Obviously Millsap out. You just have to worry about the rising salaries of uh, Harris and Barton. Or, I guess just Barton. Barton up to 7,600. Harris is down now to 63, um, which almost makes him a lock, in my opinion. Or, at least that's my guess when I paste this in. So, let's grab the Nuggies. Yeah, we'll look at Gary Harris, and we'll look at Murray. Um, and then I want to see how much Kenneth Fareed's salary has jumped. So Fareed is up from 56 to 59. Okay. Murray is down to 54, which is even more interesting. I know that he is potentially dinged up. So let's take that look. So Gary Harris needs 31. A um, little bit of a stinker in the last one, but over 30 in his last four. So that's a no-brainer in my opinion. And then um, Fareed needs 30, which he put up in the last game. Um, if he's going to get 25-plus minutes... I like it. It's not like the Pacers are, have anything to really deal with him. And then um, let's take a look at Jamal Murray. Because he's been interesting with um, with Jokic out and with Millsap out. So he needs 27. Uh, came out of the game with the, the tightness in the calf in the last one. But, you know, since Jokic has been out, he went for 43, 28, 29. All of those are above value um, so I think Jamal Murray is worth a, a closer look but you would want to pay attention up until 330 he's not really safe I think that's more of a GPP thing than anything else just because of the the variance of his potential playing time um, but he looks good you know like if you knew for a fact he was healthy I think that you would want to run him out there so that's it for the three early games um, you know it's a pretty pretty narrow list I'm surprised that I got as much Detroit and Boston as I did. Um, but my focus now is going to be primarily the three late games. So I'm going to focus that down into just those three. And I'm going to leave a space here just to show the, the delineation. Um, so three games on the night for the main slate. Uh, Wolves hosting the Mavs. They are eight-point favorites. 
Uh, we've got the Pelicans hosting the Sixers, which should be the big fantasy game of the night. Um, that's the first and second highest implied totals. And then we've got uh, 7.30 start Knicks and Hawks in a battle of a game that might not have a viewer. So, <laughs> man, that's a shit show. A Pelican-Sixers game will be fun as hell, though. So let's go to Minnesota first. Um, as I said, they're hosting Dallas. 107.25 implied total, which is third on the night, a quarter point behind Philly. Um, much like every other day for the past week, I have gone with the assumption that Bielitsa is going to play. All of the Wolves' salaries are up dramatically. Carl Anthony Towns up to 9,600 from 8,400, which is ludicrous. Uh, Butler has climbed. Um, $600 in the past two games. Jeff Teague is up $800. Andrew Wiggins is up $600. All of these guys are going up based on shitty games, which is annoying and makes up playing a three-game slate extra annoying. So we do need to look at Dallas because, or we do need to look at the Wolves because of their implied total, but those salaries are in my opinion, prohibitive, particularly Towns. Um, that's a gigantic leap to his salary. And everything fits right now. So Butler, Wiggins, Towns, Teague, Gibson all need a peek. Um, this is going to be an interesting analysis. So, are there any wild gaps in salary? So Jimmy Butler looks really good on DK. More so than anybody else. Uh, Alright, so Teague needs 35. I'm not really worried about anything defensively on the Mavs. Um, so Teague needs 35. Hasn't done it since he's been back. 33 has been his ceiling. Um, has he been playing well this year? God, no, it's so itchy. It's so cold here, and I have the heat on in the house. It's just creating this weird, like, cold feet, warm face, blood circulation thing. I don't like it. I don't know what I'm talking about either, so. Ignore me. Where is Teague? There he is. Okay. Um... Because of the total, I'm cool with it, and it's a three-game slate. Uh, not my favorite, though. Wiggins at 67, so he needs 33. Been on three straight uh, crap games. I'm going to pass there. Butler needs 45. He's done in three of his last four. I think this has been a little bit of a coming out party for Butler. And I also think that if Bialita comes back, that's a benefit for Butler. Uh, provides a little bit more floor spacing, a little bit more space for him to, to do the things that he's good at. Then Towns needs 48, which he did in the last game. I'm short of it four before that. So Towns would deal with center Dirk for a bit. Um, yeah, I can't imagine paying up for, like, I can't imagine going for Towns and not wanting to go to Embiid or Cousins. It seems like a weird fade. So I'm going to skip that and go to Dallas. Um, Dennis Smith is out. Yogi Ferrell is 4,000 and should get close to 30 minutes. I think that he's going to have to at least get a minor look. Although he did end up with less minutes than he normally plays, even with Dennis Smith out. So it might be a J.J. Barea night. Unfortunately, J.J. Barea is $6,400. I didn't think he was ever going to play again after he hurt his leg last year or two years ago. Yeah, here he is doesn't stop ticking 
Berea up from 4,900 in his two nights ago to 6,400 with Dennis Smith out. So FanDuel can suck it. Um, that's just an annoying uh, leap up. It's more fun to be able to use him. But what are you going to do? Um, just That's just annoying. It's just so annoying. So let's take a look at Dallas here. It's hard to get excited about Dallas. They are a, a dreadful basketball team. Okay, so we want to look at at Wes Matthews. We want to look at Yogi Ferrell. That's probably it. So Wes needs uh, 24. Did it in the last one. Didn't really do it prior to that. Oh yeah. I can only assume that he's going to try to create a little bit more with Dennis Smith out. So I will entertain that, especially at 4,800. Bray and eating 32 is, well, we're not going to go for that. But Yogi Ferrell needs 20. Um, I, there's not a lot of upside there. I think maybe Dwight Powell deserves a look. 4,100. How did that fit for him? Sure. Yeah, I think Dwight Powell deserves a look. That's probably it for me in this game. Um, Powell looks great on DK. And... I'd probably look at Beret at 5,200 on DK. All right, now the game that we actually care about. Um, Pelicans and the Sixers. Pelicans, 113.5. It's the highest total in this three games. Uh, no Jameer Nelson tonight, so expect a lot of Rondo, who got some rest in the last one. And, um, you know, we have AD and Cousins back. Well, AD back. You know, he's been back for one game. Nothing interesting from a fantasy perspective, but I think that I'm going to be all over him tonight. Let's take that quick look at Philly's uh, defense with the Pelican shot chart. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to like in this game. I have a feeling, you know, most of these guys are going to be highly owned, which kind of makes it an unfun day to play possible I just sit out entirely tonight um, I want to see how everything opens up if, but if I don't like the build it's the same thing I should have done last night I hated it I hated it the entire time it took me forever to build a lineup I should have just bailed and I didn't yeah Boogie Cousins uh, AD Drew Etom Moore everybody's in play here so let's look at it um, Rondo needs 30 No reason to think he can't do that. Uh, Etom Moore. Well, let's look at Drew first. 73. So that's 36 and change. Um, it's not going to be for me now that AD is back. Look at Etom Moore at 46. So that's 23. Um, I think he, he's in line to potentially succeed with um, Jameer out. And then uh, I think AD is probably my favorite play tonight just because of his salary. I have a feeling like this is going to be a, a nice welcome back to playing well game for him. And then Boogie at 12,000 needs 60. Um... I think he's probably a little bit too expensive now that AD is back. I'd I'd assume that Embiid is much cheaper than that. Yeah, 10-7. I'd have a hard time going up to Boogie in this case. So now we look at the Pels, and uh, this is going to be interesting for the shooters. So we have no uh, no Bobby Covington tonight. He is, as of right now, doubtful. 
so I do not have him projected in. I think we... I do have um, Saric in. I assume this is going to create a couple extra minutes for TLC, and then I'm um, not really sure still how many minutes Trevor Booker will get. I've got him in for uh, 15, and this is assuming TJ McConnell plays as well. Uh, this is going to look like a really good game for JJ Redick. Uh, we also want to look at Embiid. Um, doesn't feel like the best Ben Simmons game. So I'm going to look at Redick, Embiid, uh, Saric, and Bayless. TLC is a decent punt in uh, GPPs. So Bayless is at 3,900. Um, so he needs just under 20, which is pretty much what he does every night. So I'll ignore that. Redick is at 5,400, so he needs 27. Um... I, that I do like a lot. It's a really great game for Redick. If those shots fall, he could have a really huge game. Saric needs 32. Which is what he put up last night. No reason to suspect he couldn't do that again. And then Embiid needs... Uh, 53, 54, something in that area. Um, took last night off. Had a, a big one two nights ago. Um, this feels like a decent Joel Embiid game. You're going to want a lot of this game. You know, only three. Now let's move on to the, the gem of the slate. Knicks and Hawks. Uh, Knicks are five-point favorites at home. 105.75 implied total, which is fourth on the night. Cantor right now is set to play, but otherwise we're looking probably at pretty much just Porzingis, McBuckets, and Cantor, I guess. All right, I'll look at the zinger. I won't look at McBuckets. Mm, I will look at Cantor. So Porzingis is at 9,500, so he needs like 47. Hasn't been good in the past two games. Hasn't really been good in a while. Doesn't seem like the time to pay up for him. Although a home game against the Hawks could definitely be the cure for what ails you. I'd like him in a GPP. Cantor needs 35. Um, it's not really something I expect out of him with Porzingis healthy. So uh, I'm going to pass on the Knicks entirely. I don't know if that's completely feasible. I might need one guy out of that. You know, it could be that you end up with uh, Frankie Nicotine or something to fill it out. I'm going to throw everything in the optimizer and spit out whatever comes out first, and we'll see where that goes. Now to the Hawks. 100.75 implied total. It is fifth, point and a half higher than Dallas. So we're going to look at Tyler Kavanaugh. Uh, we'll look at Bazemore. They've got some options. But really, I mean, no one's going to watch this game. Football Sunday and Knicks Hawks. Not the best. So, yeah, let's look at Ilyasova and Kavanaugh. I think Baysmore and Prince as well. Doesn't seem like a shooter night, although... You know, he could love playing in MSG. What does he need? 41? I always miss on him. Bays needs 27. Big night last night. Only time he's been over 27. Let's see if he can keep it alive, I guess. Would have been prime for a Tim Hardaway Jr. revenge game here. 
All right, uh, Torian Prince needs 27-ish. Not really for me. Ilya Sova needs 27-ish. Got it last night in the game before that. He has been playing pretty well. We will take a peek there on a short slate. Kavanaugh needs 20. Been there in the last two. I'll dance with that. That's the list. Man, it's tiny. Three games, though, actually. It's probably bigger than I expected. So. Let's copy that over, and let's see what spits out. I've got a sneaky suspicion that the stuff that spits out is going to look like garbage. Utter, utter garbage. So. Let's take a peek. Okay. Pow! That's three lineups. I wanted 50. Did I not type 50? I didn't type 50. Sweet sassy molassy, that's a lot of Atlanta. Hoy! Okay, so Rondo, check. Bays, check. Kavanaugh, check. Embiid, check. AD, check. Etam Moore, check. Oh, okay. So let's do Rondo, AD, Kavanaugh, Embiid, Bays. See where we end up. There's McBuckets and Nicotine sneaking in. You can see it coming. Alright, so I'm going to need some piece of this Wolves game now. So Teague or Butler. They both come up relatively the same amount of times. So when it's Butler, Teague is in one of them. Okay. You know, honestly, this doesn't look too shabby. I think Butler is a necessity. I didn't even look at the shape of tonight. Um, yeah, Butler's probably a necessity. So we need Minnesota, Dallas, New Orleans, Philly, the Knicks, and Atlanta. God. Yeah, okay. I think I want to get Teague as well and see which lineup that is. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with filling in with McBuckets and TLC. Sure. What does that take me off of the optimal? That's going to be my placeholder. T. Grondo, Bazemore, TLC, Butler, McBuckets, AD, Kavanaugh, and Embiid. Ugh. All right. That's the placeholder for now. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to play tonight or not. We'll see how the news comes out. Um, don't know if I'm going to do a live before lock. We'll see. If there's interest in it, I'd be happy to. I am going to be around. Plans have changed for today. Um, so 
That's all I got. Uh, you know, the drill, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter, Patreon, my website, which is now going to be housing the projections, joshengelman.com slash FanDuel or joshengelman.com slash DraftKings, depending on which site you're looking for. Otherwise, um, that's it for me. Enjoy.